Hi, fifth grade. Today we're going to be doing module two, lesson 10. And now we're taking everything we know about multiplication with the area models and the standard algorithm. And we're starting to use this with decimals. And you're going to see that multiplying whole numbers and multiplying decimals are very similar. It's just a little bit different. So we're going to walk through this today. And it should be a fairly quick lesson. So we're going to start off with, in your notes, the very first problem, 43 times 2 and 4 tenths. And you'll notice that I already have your area model set up, but just follow along with me so you can see how I set that up. So we start off when we have 43, and as usual, I know that I will take this number and I will split it up into expanded form. So I have 4 in my 10, so I have 40, and I have 3 in my 1, so I have 3 once. Now you'll notice that I actually took this number, even though it's it's the bigger number, I actually took this number and I actually put it on the side instead of putting it on top like I usually would. So that's going to be our first difference. So I am going to take this whole number and I'm going to put it on the side. Remember when I put numbers on the side of my area model, I like to start with the smallest place value and work towards my largest place value. Now I'm going to be taking this decimal, and this decimal is going to be put in expanded form, but on top of my area model. And when I look at this 2 and 4 tenths, what I want to do is I want to decompose it down, and I want to think of this as 24 tenths, because when I think of this as 24 tenths, what that does is that gives me a number that I can think about in expanded form without the decimal and it makes it a little bit easier for me what i mean by this is that when i look at this number 24 if i just look at it as the number 24 i could think of what does this number look like in expanded form well it kind of looks like i have two in my tenths and which is 20 and i have four in my ones which would be four and then what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to write that on my area model so it just looks like the number 24 and then off to the side, what I'll do is I'll write the units for this, just to remind myself that this isn't technically 24, it is 24 tenths. So that's another one of our differences. So our first difference is that the really big number is now going to be on the side, and the decimal is going to be on the top. And then that decimal, it is decomposed to a um its smallest place value i write that number in expanded form and then just write the units off to the size and now what i can do is i can just kind of look at this problem as a normal multiplication problem that we've been doing so far so i can look at this as three times 20 three times two is six add along that zero for 60 three times four is 12. my first partial product will be 72 tenths and then over here, I'll do 40 times 20, which would be 4 times 2, which is 8, and then add those two zeros, and then 40 times 4, which is 160, and then I'll get 960 from that. So I add 60 plus 12 to get 72, 800 plus 160 to get 960, and I'm going to add these two things together. So down here, I'll start with my larger number, 960 tenths and then 72 tenths adding these two together i get what looks like 1032 but remember these units are important all of these units are in tenths right now everything should be in tenths so what this means is that i have 1032 tenths and since i have 1032 tenths what that means is that this two needs to be in the tenths place. So when I come up here to write my answer, what I need to do is make sure that my two is in the tenths, which means that I'll have a decimal point right here, and then that would leave my three in the ones place, the zero in the tenths, and the one in the hundreds place for a final answer of 103 and two tenths. So let's show what this looks like in your standard algorithm. So it's going to be very similar to what you have seen in your standard algorithm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the decimal first. And just like I did over here where I wrote it in unit form, I'm also going to do that over here. So I'm going to start with 24 tenths at the top. And then I'm going to multiply it 
by 43. And then just keep in mind that when I go to find my final answer that this tenths is going to come down. So I remind myself that is the unit I'm working with. And I don't forget to put my decimal into my answer. So we're going to start with 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1, which is 7. I get that first partial product of 72 tenths. Then I need to add a 0 as my placeholder because I'm multiplying in the tens place. I do 4 times 4, which is 16. And then I do 4 times 2, which is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9, which gives me 960 tenths. Then I move on to my addition. 2 plus 0 is 2. 7 plus 6 is 13. 1 plus 9 is 10. And again, remember, it looks like 1,032. Remember, we're bringing these units down, this tenths. And I have 1,032 tenths which again reminds me that I need to put this decimal place here so that this two is in the tenths place. And then that gives me my final answer of 103 and two tenths. All right, let's take a look at our next problem. So this one is three and five tenths times 42. And for the most part in this lesson, you'll just be working with the tenths place. So it doesn't get too complicated in your numbers won't be too large, so you'll be mostly doing two-digit by two-digit multiplication, which is a lot simpler than that three-digit multiplication. So we have three and five-tenths times 42. Again, we'll start with the area model, and this is where you'll start creating an area model along with me. I'm going to start with this decimal, and this decimal, <coughs> if I were to decompose it down to its smallest place value, which is the tenths, I can just kind of pretend that that decimal is not there and look at it like it is 35 tenths. So I have 35 tenths, and when I think 35 tenths, I can decompose or show the expanded form of this number now that it is decomposed. So it looks like I have 3 in a tenths place, which would give me 30, and then I have 5 in my ones place which would give me five ones. Remember this number, this decimal is going to be the number that always goes on top of my area models. So starting with my largest place value, making my way to the smallest, I'll write 30 plus five. But don't forget about those units, it's 30 plus five tenths. Draw a line going straight down from that plus sign. I'll move on to my next place value, which is 42. I have four in my tenths, so that would be 40 and two in my one, so that would just be two. So when I write that in expanded form, I have two plus 40, and again, where I see that plus sign, I draw a line straight across. And now I can start multiplying. Remember, when you're doing this top part, you just need to think of it as if the decimal wasn't there, what does that number look like? Write it in expanded form, basically. So let's start multiplying. Two times 30 is 60. Two times five is 10 which gives me my first partial product of 70. Then I do 40 times 30, four times three is 12. Add those two zeros for 120. And then 40 times five, four times five is 20. And just because I have one zero there, doesn't mean I forget about this zero. I still need to add that zero along. So I have uh, 1,200 plus 200, which gives me 1,400. And then I need to add both of these partial products together. Remember that these partial products are not 1,470 technically. They're 1,400 tenths and 70 tenths. And that's going to remind us when we get our final answer that I don't have 1,470, I have 1,470 tenths. Which means that when I go to show my final answer, what I need to make sure that I have is that this very last place value needs to be in the tenths place. So if this is in the tens, that means I put a decimal here so that the seven is in the ones, the four is in the tens, and the one is in the hundreds, which gives me a final answer of 147. Now, let's show this on our standard algorithm as well. So remember, I write the decimal as what looks like a whole number, but I'm just writing this decimal in unit form. So I have 35 tenths. And then I'm multiplying it by 42. Then we'll start multiplying. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1, leave the 0. 
Three times two is six plus one, which is seven. And then I need to add a zero for that placeholder because I'm now multiplying in the tens place. Four times five is 20, so I carry the two, leave the zero. Four times three is 12, 12 plus two is 14. And now I can start adding up for 1,470, but remember that's not my final answer. These units need to come straight down. So then I'm showing you that I have 1,470 tenths. So that is the unit form of my answer, but now I need to write it as a decimal. So I'll show that the zero needs to be in the tenths and then everything else is in their place value. So zero is in the tenths, we have our decimal point, seven in the ones, four in the tens, and one in the hundreds place. Also, make sure that your area model partial products are still matching the partial products in your um, standard algorithm. So it's very important that we always keep the decimal on top here and over here in our standard algorithm. So go ahead and try the problem on the back now. You're going to be multiplying 15 and 6 tenths times 73. When you're going to multiply 15 and 6 tenths, I wrote a little bubble that says think 156 tenths. When you think 156 tenths, what you're thinking about is what does 156 look like in standard form? So this one's a little bit trickier because I am making you do that three-digit multiplication, but I know that you guys can do it. So for this one, you're going to be thinking about what does 156 tenths look like in expanded form, and then you'll be multiplying that by 73. If you have any questions, please let me know, and good job today.